In this video, I'm going to show you how to use just one of the new features of Google Analytics to customize Google Analytics so that you align what you see very, very specifically with day-to-day -day business purposes and tasks that you have, rather than Google Analytics being something that contains a load of data which you just go and look at when you need it. I'm going to show you how to pull out of it just precisely what it is that is relevant to your specific business goals at this precise moment. In order to do that, I'm going to have to choose a particular type of goal or project. So my theme for this example is going to be the getting of new customers, which sounds like a pretty common theme for us all. But I find that in reality, when using Google Analytics, a lot of us get very bogged down into things like optimizing our checkout uh, abandon rates or looking at specific projects like email campaigns and indeed PPC campaigns which to some extent are quite often focused on uh, converting existing customers to be honest and the problem with just concentrating on retention and existing customers is that this is no matter how you good you get at it it's a very it's, all you're doing is slowing the overall decline there's a guy called Kevin Hillstrom who writes really well about this stuff at uh, a site called Mine That Data. And he's come up with these numbers, which provide a very stunning example of the issue that I'm talking about. If you had 100,000 customers and your retention rate, that's people who bought again, was 39%, if you didn't get any new customers after only five years, you'd have less than 1,000 left. Now, supposing you manage to increase that retention rate by more than 50%, which is going some, I assure you, and got it up over 60%, your 100,000 would still be less than 10,000, less than 9,000, in fact, after five years. So I think that gives you a very, very good idea about indication of why exactly getting new customers is so important. On the subject of getting new customers, there's a brilliant definition of this process, I think, by someone called John Jansch. And John Jansch writes wonderful stuff about this on a, on a site called ducttapemarketing.com. He defines the process as getting people who have a need to know, like, and trust you. Now, for today, I'm going to concentrate on the first part of that, which is really the getting people who have a need to know about your site. And indeed, we'll go get some insight of to what extent they're liking and trusting you. So I'm going to show you how to sort out Google Analytics to look at that. Now, the term, the, the concept I think we need to get in this into our heads at this point is the idea of generic search. So if we're looking to people who have a need but don't know about you yet, then the way that they're, they're probably just researching the subject, uh, they're, they're looking for something to buy, they don't know the details of it yet. They're very, very early in the stages of buying something, and I suspect they're probably just researching on Google. So what we're going to look at is the search term that's coming to your site from people who are conducting generic searches. That means searches in which your brand, none of your brand terms appear. So that's what this is about, this process. And the way I'm going to show you to do it, how to do it today, is using custom dashboards in Google Analytics. There are two words there that are relevant. One is that these things are customized. You start with a blank screen and you add what you want to show on it. And the other is that dashboards is plural. There's an S on it. If I can draw your attention to the left-hand navigation here, you'll see that, in fact, I tend to have more than one dashboard in play. Uh, so the one that we're looking at for today is this example about customer acquisition. I actually mean generic search by that. It's a bad, bad label. But you'll see that the one underneath that I've got is errors and alarms. And I'll just mention that one. That's one where I have uh, all the data relating to things like my 404 error page, uh, checkout ab abandoned rate, stuff of that type. The things that I look at need to glance at to see if something odd is going on or if something's wrong. Anyway, back to this idea of customizing a dashboard. You can basically start with a blank and you can display chunks of data up to 12 chunks of data in little boxes which Google call widgets. There are four types of widget and I'm going to talk about just three of them. The first are timelines. Uh, you can see them highlighted there. 
those are basically very, very familiar to us, all those are line ser data series expressed as line charts. Line charts on their own tend to take up quite a lot of space and don't tell you very much, but th there are two key points about these. Uh, one is that you can compare two, two metrics, two data series, and at that point they tell you something. So in this case, these instances, I'm comparing revenue with visits, so we're getting some idea of what's going on there. Where if we get a surge of visits that aren't converting, it's going to show up here. The other key point, which is the secret, the key point of this customization, is that you can filter the widgets so that they only show a specific set of data. So all the widgets that are on this dashboard have been filtered so they're only showing search traffic. And what's more, they're only showing search traffic where the Keywords that we use for the search do not include any of your brand terms. So I just sort of hinted that I don't think very much of line charts by and large. I'll now move on to my favourite type of uh, widget, which are the ones that Google Analytics refers to as metric widgets. I like these a lot because they pack a huge amount of data into a very small, small space, and you could, which you can take in at a glance, but you can also get quite a lot of detailed understanding out of them. What they show is on the left, and I've had to blank these out for obvious reasons, the headline number, whatever it is, your revenue, your conversion rate, your revenue per visit, your bounce rate, what have you. Then underneath it, this is where it gets interesting, it shows you what the average is for the whole site, what the general figure for that is, and then even more interesting, it shows you a little green or red percentage to show you to what extent you're better or worse than the site average. So, for example, typically you will see that your conversion rate for these visits from generic search will be much, much lower than the conversion rate for the site overall, because the site overall is probably benefiting from visits from brand search and from email and so on. Over on the right of these boxes, these widgets, you get a little line chart called a spark line, and in my opinion, those are perfectly adequate for seeing if there's anything odd going on, to see what the general trend is and to see if there's any odd spikes or holes in the data. If there is and you want to find out more, you then click on the widget because each one can be configured to link you through to a more, you know, to the actual full size proper report for whatever it is you're looking at. So I think those are very, very powerful. The third type of metric uh, widget is the table widget. Now these display a list of items in the table view. In this case we're looking at uh, search, so an obvious one to include there is keyword, but it might be landing pages or whatever. And then two metrics. Now in this instance I'm showing visits, which is obviously very interesting, and revenue. Now at that point I'm going to pause and introduce a concept to your thought which is that since we're looking at visits which are so early in the overall buying process, and that typically it may take several visits before someone actually chooses to buy from you, these particular keywords are not generally going to have very, very high revenue or conversion rates. So if we come back to that idea of knowing, liking and trusting you, it might be more interesting to see metrics which related to the gave us some understanding of to what extent people are coming to the site on those keywords and knowing or liking, sorry, liking would be the relevant stage, what they see. I've got some examples of that up above there. One of them is one that you're very, very familiar with, which will be the bounce rate. So that's a fairly binary black or white. They came, they didn't like it, they went. Um, but the other is a more interesting one, which is I've got a widget that's showing the percentage of visits where people saw more than three pages. So we're saying they liked us quite a bit there, and you'd configure the number of pages to be appropriate to your site. Another example which I haven't got on there might be that they got as far as actually looking at a product page. That would indicate they liked us quite a bit and they were maybe beginning to trust us. Uh, I hope you understand the process there. You could add one for adding to basket, but I think we're getting ahead of ourselves there. I mentioned that there were four types of these widgets. The other one is the pie chart. I'm not a fan. To me, there's not a great deal of information that you can see in those. Uh, on a, but if you feel differently, they are available. You can add them. 
I'll now go on and show you how to make one of these reports. Okay, step one is to head up to the top left tab where you are presented with your existing dashboards. Click here on the left for add a new dashboard and then you give it a name. I've used personal name there because I wanted to drive home the point that these are specific to your login. I would actually recommend that you name your dashboard according to its purpose, such as traffic acquisition or retention or whatever it may be. You click create. And now you're being offered the chance to add some data to the, uh, to the dashboard. We're going to start with an ordinary uh, line graph called a timeline. Now we're going to add, what are we going to look at on this? Google is a search-based company. They're obsessed with search, so go with it. It's the easiest way to find things. Revenue, that's what we want. And we're going to compare it with, we're going to have two lines on this. We're going to have revenue and visits. There we go. I'm also very, very keen that my dashboard should be specific to a purpose, so I'm just going to have a load of different ones of these little widgets showing different types of traffic. So in this case, I'm going to filter it down. I just want to see people who came from my unpaid search and were not searching for one of my brand terms. So I'm going to add a filter. I'm going to say only show traffic where the medium exactly matches organic and don't show keywords now the thing about keywords is if your brand is like most of them people spell it in lots of different ways or you may indeed have different brand terms so you need to be able to show more than one version here so switch this over to regular expression I'll use my own blogs example right it's CX focus is what my blogs called but a lot of people also put a space in there when they're searching. So I'm going to stick in the vertical pipe bar and type the version with a space. And I will call this you know, organic, organic generic revenue versus visits. And that's it. I'll come on to this box on another occasion about what you can put in there. And there you go. I don't actually have any revenue, as you can see. Right, I said on another occasion, that occasion had better be now. Um, into that box you put a link through to the report that you want the widget to link to. And there's a tip here, which is to go to the reporting question and then sort it out and tweak it so that it shows the data exactly as you want. You might, for example, if you're dealing with these things like uh, conversion rates or bounce rates or engagement goals, you might want to switch it over to show the comparison view, which is a very, very powerful way of uh, looking at data and making those instant comparisons within Google Analytics. So basically, sort it out so that the report's showing what you want, and then copy the URL from the report and paste it into that box and save it, because that way you'll be saving the specific configuration so that each time you click through from the widget, you don't have to fuss around reconfiguring things. OK, that's it for now, really. Um, I mentioned also in there, there was the thing about, uh, you saw me working with a, a list, a regular expression, as they call it, for work, building up a list of brand keywords. On this slide down at the bottom here, there's a, a link there which will take you through to a blog post I wrote about uh, working with brand keywords, which teaches you how to do that and has another embedded video. The blog address is up there in the middle of the screen, and of course, as you know, I make videos about this. I write about it on Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, the whole lot. The easiest way of getting to that these days is to go to my profile at google.com, uh, and the details of that are in the middle of the screen. I hope you found this interesting. Uh, if you don't have any questions, you'll be able to find my email through lots of different channels there. Please get in touch and ask away. I'd be happy to help.